Good morning, Barry Thornton here, your Vinyl Monkey audio guru and the head of audio Austin Audio Works. We've got a very interesting question from AG, and it's about record weight and how it affects the performance or what a record sounds like. But to begin with, records, 12-inch uh, vinyl records, do come in a variety of weights. Uh, standard weight is around uh, 110 grams to 140 grams. Uh, supposed audio file records get up to 180 grams, and then the supposedly even better ones are 200 grams. It simply means the record is thicker. While it does change the vertical tracking angle ever so slightly, the difference is kind of questionable. Uh, one group of folks says, well, gee, with a deeper, thicker record, you can cut deeper grooves. Mm, well, that doesn't quite work that way. The groove itself is only a couple hundred microns deep, and uh, it doesn't matter how thin the record is, the grooves don't come anywhere near it. In fact, um, it's kind of interesting, the um, our Library of Congress has been converting all their audio uh, tapes and audio stuff over to uh, uh, records. And they do this because the record technology has a longer lifetime. And they're making the records on titanium discs and aluminum discs. And these are very thin discs. Uh, maybe that's, uh, I have to pardon my cat Fred. He just moved in. There's no way to deal with him. Uh, there, Fred, say hello. Smile. Okay, that's it for him. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> the thickness of the record uh, has does have an effect. And the question is how much? Uh, first of all, Thin records have a tendency to warp more. Warpage is not at least bit good when it comes to a turntable. And the reason for this is the warpage itself causes the needle to move so much inside that it moves into nonlinear regions of its operation and produces a variety of distortions. So you want the record flat. In fact, a lot of people put a weight on top of the center of the record to try to hold it down flat on the turntable. At one time, there were some turntables produced that even had air hose hooked up to them that would suck the record down and keep it flat. But for the most part, what you're interested in is a flat record. The thickness of it doesn't seem to have a lot of correlation with the uh, audiophilism. Uh, while some people argue it does, other people argue it doesn't, it's very hard to get two records that are identical pressings, identical mastering, and yet of slightly different thickness. And when that event does happen, generally people find there's not a lot of difference between the two. The thing that makes a record good is the mastering. In other words, when the record is first made, a, um, a lacquer plate is cut uh, by a, a cutting machine, it's called a mastery machine. It looks like a turntable, except it kind of works in reverse. Instead of taking wiggles out, it put wiggles on the surface. And then they plate it with uh, metal, peel the metal off, and make a master out of it. The squeezing of the record seems to be the trick. And for some reason, uh, around 140 mils, uh, um, uh, 140 grams, it seems to be a real good area for working. So the bottom line of the question is, hmm, hmm, maybe. <laughs> Sorry to be so uh, ambiguous about it. Uh, there are other things that uh, have a greater effect on the performance of the record. One is recording it at a higher speed. In other words, 45 RPM extended play discs, while they don't have as much music on it, has considerably better quality music. The speed of the disc extends the high frequency response. Um, Oh, he's getting ready to go somewhere. Okay. And um, the result is that you wind up with a, a, a higher fidelity, a broader bandwidth. Uh, thicker records, it is believed, uh, and there is some evidence to support this, are quieter. In other words, a 180-gram uh, disc um, will be generally quieter than a 110-gram disc. And this is because <clears throat> a lot has to do with the physics of the plastic and how plastic itself works. Remember, a record is a pliable and flexible thing, and we kind of want to keep them that way. Uh, if you set the tracking weight right and have all the, uh, the various forces involved on the stylus right, the record should, either record, a thick one or a thin one, should last you about the same time, which is a long time. Very, very hard to say, 50, 100, 200 plays. It all depends on how well you treat the record. And that will be the subject of another uh, talk we will have, which is the Karen Feeding Records, which is coming up. So bottom line, records um, thickness is 
seems to be more of a promotional thing. Um, I don't object to either a thin one or a, a thick one because it was mastered and printed well. The thing is exquisite, and uh, that's simply it. So, okay, AG, that, thank you for that question. Uh, does it matter? Um, not that much, but uh, this becomes... In audiophilism, there is a kind of a religion. <laughs> Leaps of faith things that must be empirically appear to be true because they're kind of obvious. And one of the suggestions is that the thicker record is what it's just be obvious. Wouldn't it be that it would be thicker, there would be a greater mass, less rumbles, uh, less noises, etc. Um, maybe not always so. That's one of those things going to have to be your call. A good record is simply a good record. Alrighty, thank you. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.